All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, the chief observer of the European Union election observation mission, Barry Andrews, had in a press briefing last week noted that the February elections exposed an enduring systemic weaknesses and therefore signal a need for further legal and operational reforms to enhance transparency, inclusiveness, and accountability. He said that the shortcomings in the law and electoral admission hindered the conduct of well-run and inclusive elections and damaged trust in the independent national election um, electoral commission now the eu um, that's the ecom eu eom then offered 23 recommendations for consideration by the Nas nigerian government that would be improved uh, or that would improve other further elections uh, or future elections now however the statement in the statement titled, We Reject European Union's Conclusion on the 2023 General Elections, the President's Special Advisor on Special Duties, Communications and Strategy, Dele Alake, okay. alleged bias and an intention to impeach the integrity of the 2023 election, which it, um, it based or which it described as the best organized general elections in Nigeria since 1999. So today we're asking, <laughs> see me opening my eyes, the best? What are your thoughts on the federal government's rejection of the European Union's election um, final report? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa 1 with the hashtag Wayshow. Okay. First of all, eh? okay, let me come to you. Okay, we need to question like your idea of best. Uh, because we all saw it. We let's not even be sentimental now, right? We all saw it. We all we saw the news, saw the news, saw people's experience, experiences on social best, media right? and all of that. This best is best because I don't think that there's we, we need to call it. Right? Right? <laughs> because best <laughs> relative <laughs> are be after you call one hundred and fifty, your family is your the best. best. Yes, okay. Please, let's be very careful because the things that we do, we, we literally shoot ourselves in the foot sometimes. The, like your people say, O-D-D-E-U-E-O-M came out. Okay, fine. We've seen several reports. We've seen the Yaga report as well, which literally says the same thing that, you know, the eu -E -M has said. How is it that you're now coming to tell us that, first of all, you are rejecting the report? You need to state why you are rejecting the report. Have you guys even sat down to even analyze the report to say, okay, this is what these guys are saying, this is what these guys are saying? Have they lied about them? They haven't. Mm. I've gone through the thing like, oh, everything that they said there is practically true. So isn't the best thing to go back and say, okay, Maybe this is where we messed up. Maybe this is what we should have, we should, this is what we should have done. Instead of outrightly saying, oh, you are rejecting the report, and since 1999, you don't think that there's any other, any other election that has been as coordinated as this 2023 elections, we know that that's a lie anyway. But yeah, let's keep it moving. Now, okay, let's now come back to the fact that, um, what, what, what's his name now? Dela Lake has also come, come out to say, oh, um, EU has said that, they are creating 23, they're giving 23 recommendations of, you know, what INEC needs to do better, the reforms that they need to do and all of that. And you are rejecting that as well, saying that you don't think that that's correct. We are the ones doing ourselves. How else can we be better if you cannot even take such constructive criticism? How do you intend to do better in 2027? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I will stop here for now. Let me come to you, Diola. <laughs> Today I'm here to observe. I'm an observer. <laughs> Diola... Let me hear your thoughts. What do you think, first of all? Have you gone through the report? And what, do you, what are your oh, thoughts yes. on it here? Um, I have gone through the report. And um, honestly, it's um, as much as um, there are facts, truths, and I mean, observations according to their own mandate, the truth is, um, I mean, I, I, I don't know if... Um, if... Um, it is okay. So for me, you know, when I read it, and then when I read what the government, you know, the when the government rejected the report, um, it, that was expected because I mean, if you don't reject the report, then it automatically gives credence to the fact that um, the whole election or the whole electoral process was a sham. And at this point, I think that the current administration feel that they have 
gone too far to accept that. So maybe it is pride. Maybe it is just, I, I, I don't know. Um, well, I, I, I don't know. I don't know because honestly, I see no reason why they can't um, say that um, these recommendations are taken in good faith and um, will be worked on towards um, 2027. I mean, if these are real students of democracy, then they would understand that um, democracies all over the world are very interested in elections that are happening in Nigeria, considering how populous Nigeria is and Nigeria's place in the League of Nations. But um, I don't know. Outside of that, the truth is um, European Union election, whatever, 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 they're still almost like a civil society. The, the Nigeria is a sovereign state and um, there is little or not. They can sanction Nigeria in terms of the fact that, oh, you must take our recommendation or the fact that we, we disagree with the result of this election means that um, there's something that can be done. I'm not very sure that at that level there's anything that can be done except the reports that all the electoral, um, all the participants, you know, are going through now, which is the court process, you know. So I think we just have to wait for the court to come out with their results and their verdict and let us put this down. But um, Nigeria is, uh, we're not very good with criticism. Um, we see it as um, someone saying that, um, you know, everything we're doing is wrong or we see it as we can't be corrected. And I think that's a major problem in our um, our ambition to grow as a nation. If we don't see constructive criticism, you know, I mean, this is not just from EU, um, the EOCOM or Electoral College or, you know, Yaiga or any other civil society out there. This is just, it's just simple common sense that um, when people who's, who's, who, who have taken the responsibility to ensure that um, we're able to perpetuate democracy in Nigeria, when they have put in the work and they have come up with recommendations or their fact-finding um, reports, it, is, it, it just makes sense, you know, to look at it and see where the gaps are and, Absolutely. you know, put to ensure that, I mean, going forward, hmm. you know, all these things are tackled. But again, I, I, I honestly don't know. Again, with all these things concerning Nigeria, one just... It's yeah, just it's, it's a bit tiring, but let, let me come to yeah. because let's keep EU aside, since they say that EU mm. is the problem where they get. <laughs> Electoral College, right, there were a series yeah. of tweets that was posted on the 30th of March, 2023. So mm -hmm. if you're not following Electoral College, go on Twitter and go and see it. I just want to yeah. pick a few points, right? Yeah. It says it is key to note that Electoral College, as pioneer political literacy institution in Nigeria, running a 27-course yeah. model that has educated over 10,000 Nigerians virtually, added with its classes in state physically and using radio and its model per program, went full circle mm. on improving the base of political participation, right? We start at the starting point of every political race, the Electoral Act 2022. States clearly that manual and physical copies, right, of list of members of political parties must be submitted to INEC before conventions and primaries can be conducted. Hmm. They hear oh. from the information that we have, not one of the 18 registered political parties met this criteria. This is from the section 77, subsection 3 of the Electoral Act in 2022. Right? Mm -hmm. So there is, I mean, let's even start from the basis, the foundation. So the Electoral College in Nigeria began its review on the electoral cycle from primaries, and this was quite an occasion in Nigeria, and must be very notable from them that not only did the currency of exchange of funds move to dollar, the mode of emergence in 57 of the primaries can be questioned based on emergence of the candidates as states in the electoral, uh, or, or rather as stated in the electoral act. Now, the campaigns by all 18 political parties were mad with nepotism, religious undertone, and all um, parameters abhorred by the Electoral Act were in play in the 18 political parties and its supporters, which is against the Electoral Act. Do you understand? So, if we are not, we're not even touching what, mm -hmm. what happened on Election yeah. Day, from the foundation of the elections, 
Do you understand? We didn't even get it right. Yeah. We saw dollar exchanging high. Is that not why dollars started going mm-hmm. high, high, high yeah. when they were conducting primaries? Mm-hmm. So when people then come out to bring a report, this is not the time for you to think that somebody is attacking. He's trying to attack. Because yeah. what people yeah. fail to realize as a leader, and I'm saying this, they don't. You guys don't understand what you're doing. What you are doing, you might get away with this, but what you are doing is continuous decay mm-hmm. of the system. When do we get to clean up the system? When every single time, wait till after my turn before we can fix the system. It doesn't work that way. So a lot of our political leaders, right? You get things done. You enter anyhow, anyhow. You emerge, you emerge, you know, leaders and all of that. What happens afterwards? Somebody else will say, okay, no, I have to also do go I to. Don't, and don't that's why you would see that from the EU's report. They said that whatever happened with the presidential, it had yes. an adverse effect on um, the, the state other, yes. elections. And which was what we saw that were on ground. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I don't know where the lie is in all of this. I don't know where, the, where they misrepresented the fact. And it is not because somebody is trying to favor a particular but, candidate or yes. something else. We saw the elections. People were brutal, br- brutally, um, um, what's it called, assaulted. People were, people, people, people could not vote. We saw, um, what's it called, um, cards, voters' cards being thrown in the lagoon. People were harvesting people's <laughs> voters' cards from the bush. We saw all of these things happen, right? Then yeah. even the one thing that we asked INEC to do, which was electronic transmission of results yes. from the polling units, yeah. right? That did not happen. So when there is a report, it is not for us to say, oh, no, 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 no. You people are getting it all wrong. No. Were you really, really transparent? I said, if you are, if you are lying to yourself, but you cannot lie to Nigerians. There was no transparency in these elections, right? So a lot has happened. What I would expect, right, from the presidency is saying, you know what? Let us accept the fact that they were mistaken. You cannot just come and say, no, yeah. no, 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 no. This is the best election in Never. This is not, it can never oh, be the best election. Wrong result. I was in the 2015 general elections when the emergence of President Muhammad Buhari uh, was, was uh, his, his, his okay. emergence. Yeah. And I know that election, you know, a lot of things happened. And guess what? When President, then President Jonathan saw that, come, this is the will of the people. He hands mm-hmm. stopped yeah. and made a phone call and said, you know what, congratulations. Mm-hmm. This one, it was as almost it like be. you had a cutlass to your neck. It's either you, you vote. I mean, we saw threats. People coming out openly to threaten people. Certain tribes were being, you know, mm-hmm. uh, threatened. Leave this state and all of that. So what are you saying? We'll take a break. When we come back from that break, we want to hear more of your thoughts. Then if you can have questions, stay with us. All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we're discussing the federal government's rejection of the European Union ele- uh, election re- uh, final report. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa 1 with the hashtag Wayshow. All right, Jela, you wanted to come in. Yes, um, I wanted to say that, um, you know, it's surprising. I mean, reading um, Ole Lawal's... Um, of um, electoral college report um, when he said that um, at the very basic, you know, um, some of the rules were were not adhered to. That's um, on the part of INEC. It begs the question: Is it that um, INEC just um, sit down and? create um, policies or Nigeria in terms of uh, the lawmakers, they just create policies. Nobody bothers to go read them. Because, I mean, if you read these policies, if these policies are supposed to guide your actions, are supposed to guide your deliverables, the fundamental things that were very wrong, and that begins to even say to INEC, you know what? And again, I, I also think that they have become it's political. You know, I think role is supposed to be very bipartisan. They're not supposed to be for one or any party, you know. So what we're seeing playing out is INEC not understanding its role. The, the, the people sit at the elms of affairs that should conduct, you know, should, should ensure that there is a free and fair election, do not even understand what the Constitution says about what is expected of them during electoral, you know, processes. So they can't do better. They, 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 
thing they're doing is as if they're just pulling things from the top of their head. Because I really, honestly, I mean, when I read this Kule report, the very the, the thing he said just knocked me off. Like, in all honesty, there, should have, there shouldn't have even been an election at that point. I mean, when INEC already saw what was going on, they should have somehow found a way to say, okay, you know what? XYZ are being contravened. This subsection is being contravened. This is being con this is happening. This is happening. I thought we may need to extend, you know, the date. But again, I mean, there INEC was a lot of tension. Has, um, so, so Diola, let, let me even read some of this thing. I'll come to you, Chinen. Yeah. So there's a context yeah. five. It says parties, particularly the larger parties, PDP, APC. This is now the yeah. EOM mm -hmm. for the EU, right? Uh, it says PDP, APC, Labour Party charge, charged excessive fees for participation yeah. in legally mm -hmm. uh, mandated primary elections free tickets were offered on some occasions for women to contest mm -hmm. and reduce costs for women but many people including youth remained excluded due to the lack of funds now recommendation was remove unreasonable restrictions to the rights to stand by mm -hmm. curbing the charging of excessive fees for consideration as a candidate in a party uh, primary election. So where is the lie in this, right? We know when you say that the, how much was the form again? Was it not a hundred million? million. Right? Yeah, hundred million. Okay. So now it says ahead of the elections there were various allegations of illicit cash hoarding, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and in one case, ESCC reportedly seized some thirty-two million naira, seemingly intended for vote buying in Lagos. Evidence of officials spending um, by political parties in traditional and online media where it was, um, oh, sorry, I can't read this. He said the use of paid on uh, advertising on uh, meta platforms where was relatively low. Accountability for parties, candidates, and their third parties is absence of the requirement of the traceability of the funds source. Yeah. Now they recommended that promote transparency and accountability in campaign of uh, finances, uh, finances by include a introduction of a mandatory requirement on political party candidates and third parties to op operate pre-notified um, dictated bank accounts, right, or dedicated bank accounts for donations, revenue spending, subject to clear rules and accounting, reporting and public dis uh, disclosure before, mm. during and after campaign with robust sanction for non-compliance. Remember that Labour Party had organized That's a what's it called now? What's the word now? That they did um, a telethon mm -hmm. where crowdfunding where they did a telethon. It was it was twenty four hours they were on TV People, yeah. trying to raise funds, mm -hmm. right? So they just a lot of things, you know. Please well, finance is a from this from, from this report and the recommendations. To be very honest, there's no lie in it, and I like mm. what the EU EUM has done because they have. Now identified the different areas. It's well labeled in the report. Yeah. Like, look at this one: electoral administration, which is very true. How did you pick mm. the RECs? How were the, how was the commissioner uh, uh, um, um, selected or elected in the in the, mm. in the first place? So the CSO examination of the selection process signaled that the selection process of both INEC commissioners and RECs were neither transparent nor in line with the non-partisan requirements, which is very true. We could tell that, that there were sentiments here and there, there, were, there was some sort of bias, you know. I mean, even though they claim that it is the best. And I'm saying that they claim it is the best, maybe because of the introduction of electoral or election te technology. That's talking about the Beaver systems and mm -hmm. all of that. But again, it has, we've come here and they said, hardware and software specifications of Beavers, test results, audits, basic procurement details, and so on and so forth, and so and so on rather were not were very unclear and not published transparency is a key component in adopting election technology and building trust and confidence into the system that is used i would have thought that because we're now introducing technology in this, into this whole thing it's just like when you're, you run an organization if you're logging in electronically it means that nobody can tell a lie if you log in at 7 30 mm -hmm. to 7 30 you cannot go and manipulate that is jam you cannot go and manipulate <laughs> <it>. <laughs> And you know, claim that you log in at six thirty, which I thought was that was the thing that was going to happen for uh, uh, the elections. But unfortunately, that is not what happened. And now the recommendation yeah. for that is 
ensure transparency and allow for public scrutiny of election technology by mandating a law that is timely, okay, mandating timely disclosure of tests and audit results. We definitely didn't see that happen. No. So you cannot come and tell me that that one, I even saw that happen in my polling unit anyway. Now let's now come to uh, um, um, voters registration. <laughs> Every Nigerian citizen 18 years of age and over may vote. Provided that they are residents or working in, we know that story already. You are, we saw uh, what happened with underage voting. Exactly. Jonas, and we yeah. saw the videos. Like, so, what is the lie here? Mm. There's no lie. Yeah. So, so, so that's what I'm saying yeah. to, to, to the federal government, right? Nobody is, I mean, what has happened has happened. The person that is there yeah. is already there. Sure. I mean, there's really nothing. Court cases are still ongoing. Mm. We don't know what the outcomes will be. But my point is, right, it is okay for you. You know how you say that this person is, um, if the person is, um, if you are not favoring, if the person you are not being favored, you see, you call the person a criminal. criminal but if yeah. the person is, if you are being favored, there's, there's a way they, they, yeah. they, they coin that yeah. phrase, right? Um, yeah. The person is, is a thief when the person is not, you are not favoring, but if the person, ah, no, 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 no the person is actually helping, helping the masses, right? That's what is yeah. happening. So we, we are not asking that the system be cleaned up just because for the now right there is there is what is called um ripple effect yes, right yeah for every one wrong that we continue to condone and we continue to tolerate and accommodate as a people we are seeing mm -hmm. already how it is translating so, yeah. in our society the ripple effect mm -hmm. and it's a snowball effect it will keep on growing mm -hmm. bigger and bigger yeah. and there will be a point in time that even us, we cannot control it anymore, anymore yeah. right? I always say this thing, and I'm afraid. We are sitting on a keg of gunpowder mm. in this country. There are so many things that we are tolerating and allowing to happen that will continue to eat us up as a people, right? At some point, it will now become we will turn on each other, <laughs> right? If there's, no, if there's nothing else to do, you mm -hmm. will now have to literally turn on each other. And so when, when people bring out reports like this, before you say you want to condemn or whatever and, and call, call them out, right? Okay. Can you go back to your books? You cannot okay. tell anybody in this country. Even, even your supporters. Your supporters, as like, you know, your supporters, they know that these elections were flawed. I was in a polling unit in Magodo, right? There was overvoting. Technically, they were supposed to cancel that result. Yeah. But because they had brought in thugs, this was the governorship elections. They had brought in thugs because in presidential election, a certain candidate won. So governorship, they were prepared. Right? They had brought in thugs. They had to just say, you know what? Just remove the excess. And just, you know, because there was overvoting. Technically, what happens with overvoting? Are you not supposed you to continue to yeah, I mean, cancel, cancel that entire mm -hmm. everything? There were results that were supposed to, I mean, elections that were supposed to be re uh, reconducted. They were not, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. So there's, there's, when, when you say you're rejecting a report, right? Reject it, come with your own counter uh, facts, do you understand? And figures, and counter them. Don't come and say, oh, no, 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 you they don't know what they're things. saying. You're not accepting their, their results. Where are your facts and your figures that have come to say, okay, this, your elections that was conducted was credible? Even the INEC chairman himself cannot come out to say that this election was credible. Where is he, by the way? We are still looking for him. <laughs> <laughs> we are still looking for him. Right? You know, so I mean, if you, if you look at the summary of the report, right, it's not like yeah. they are coming out to say they are condemning. And I, I don't like it when, people's, when, when people come out with statements and making it look like, oh, it's because your yeah, candidate is wrong. Yes. That's not what we are saying. Mm -hmm. That's not what we are saying. Do you understand? Mm. We need to start questioning a lot of things. It's just like parents that have, um, what's it called? Parents that have, what's the word now? Um, children that they are paying um, examiners to, to, to give them. Are you going to follow Special. that child? I know some children that, that, that had to, they've had to drop out of university to, to go and start all over again. Because even if you pass the, the exam now, what happens? How would you cope? How would you it cope? Goes, it goes beyond just that. Just, just thank that. you. It, it goes That's, beyond yeah, now. Yeah. I, but I think we have some comments. Let's quickly take some before. Okay. Let me take this one. Good evening, ladies. Welcome back to live broadcast. Hope you all had a good break and happy birthday to you, Chinelo. Thank you so much. 
<laughs> EU reports on last conducted elections should be welcome. All advice to performing credible elections in future should also be followed. The last election was a fraud and a slap on Nigerians. No hard feelings, Mr. Alake, the special advisor to President BAT. This is from Ade regards Ade. Thank you so much, Thank Ade. Thank you so much, Ade. Um, Ijeola, you have a comment? Um, yes, um, so this one says, um, good evening, um, my beautiful sisters. I'm Joseph from mainland. If we cannot tell ourselves the truth, I don't know who can tell us. It was very obvious that the election was char characterized with violence and fraud. Okay, so my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Oh, we miss you. Miss you, you Daniel. Miss I you, am Daniel. Miss you, Daniel. <laughs> It says, for the government's rejection of the European Union election um, final report, my dear beautiful sister, were made mention of two things, which is right. Without a shadow of doubt, there was exchange of dollars, and, and INEC did not do what was expected of them. The election was a terrible bad luck and nightmare. The handwriting was clear on the wall. Anyone who says this election was the best so far knows nothing and will forever know nothing. Two weeks without this program, oh my goodness, I miss <laughs> your sister. Well, congratulations on your son's alpha graduation. Oh, thank you so much. And um, my runaway sister, Chinelo, happy <laughs> birthday to you and welcome thank back. You. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank Thanks, you. I hear that INEC chairman has apologized to Nigerians. Uh -huh, okay. How true is this, please? Can somebody give I'm, me more info? Well, I've not heard anything like that. Because I haven't seen anything like that. It's not like only, it's that. Not only it's not, it's not <laughs> apology we need. Though. No. No. <laughs> but this is from Angola, right? The person wrote, oh, wow. sent the message from Angola. Wow. I don't know how true that is, honestly. But the truth is, it's beyond an apology. Mm. You see, I, I say to people, right? I am learning. Okay, he didn't apologize. Okay, somebody is saying he didn't apologize because I've not heard that. But you see, I was just going to touch on a little bit on apology. You see, you know what I see in Nigeria? Do one first. Mm. One yeah, last one, not sorry. sorry. That's what we do all the time. time. You are on the road, you are acting funny. You hit the person. Now you now lie down on the ground and be begging. Hey, John, my hey, John, my 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 <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. I always say now that, see, I would weigh my actions. I take my time. Do you understand? So that whatever happens, I will hold it in my full chest. I did the that. consequences of what I have done, I will chest it and say, I did it. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Not apologizing and coming back to say, you know, okay, she's saying, I, I next should apologize. Okay, okay that's what okay. she meant. Okay. I next chairman should apologize to Nigerians. Oh, okay, okay. You should apologize. But my sister, we don't need apology. <laughs> in all honesty, we don't need apology. What we need is accountability. The system yes. that works. We need accountability. We need we need this the court case to continue to mm -hmm. go on. Mm -hmm. We need to see. I like I, I've always said on this table, and I will keep on saying it anywhere. If the reports come back, right, and the result remains the same, but after a thorough investigation, investigation, every Nigerian would accept the result. Yeah. What we feel, I think, what 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 pains What's us. Pain? Mm -hmm. It's like I see you, you trampling on your yes. That's the that's the painful you know, part. On my yes, hand. because uh, you told me that carry your PVC and I'm go and vote. vote. I carried my PVC and I went to vote. So it's like you say, okay, no, 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 you, your 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 mouth right now, your opinion don't it. matter. That's what is. That's what I think is out. aggravating a lot of you know yeah. um, tension uh, amongst Nigerians, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and a lot of people are leaving the country because they just feel like you know what at this point there's no hope. I'm giving up, you know. But let's hear your final thoughts, Jella. Let me come to you. Then I'll come back to you, Chinelo. Well, we just need a system that works. We need accountability. We need everybody to rise to the occasion. We need citizens that are knowledgeable. Citizens that. Oh, did you lose Jola? Excuse me? Oh, I lost you for a second. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Sorry. I mean, we need um, citizens that understand their responsibilities and role, and they're ready to play their part in the, you know, in the process of governance. And that means rising up to the challenge, being a better version of themselves, because it is only when we're better that we can actually replicate ourselves in government and we can demand better. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Jola, even if I agree with you that we need to become more politically literate, um, we also, yeah. well, yes, that's also because we also need to become 
more active in government spaces as well. So in the next elections, yeah. we also need to go out there, put ourselves in offices. And now is the time to actually yeah. start. Join a party today. Look for yeah. a party to join today so that we can stop stop complaining about what the government is doing, what the government is doing. We become the government ourselves. and then Absolutely. That's it. And that is why for us, every Monday, we are in partnership with Enough is Enough. It's, it was not because we felt like doing partnership, no. <laughs> We actually understand that there's a fundamental problem, right? That office of the citizen, we're not owning that office. We need to own it. Do you understand? And I like what um, Chinelo and Diola have said. Get involved, right? It's not enough for you to sit on the sidelines. Get involved. Join a political party. You are not... See, let me tell you something. At the point of polling unit, it's already too late. Mm -hmm. I mean, Kunle yeah. Lawal used to have that thing a lot. At the point of polling unit, it's too late. Mm -hmm. You have to be part of the people that are not collecting mm -hmm. dollars to... To appoint or to elect a presidential candidate or a gubernatorial candidate or whatever at the point of primaries where they select the people exactly. right that is it where is your cool power it. lies yeah. so just imagine if you become a delegate mm -hmm. you will not collect mm -hmm. bribe because mm -hmm. you know that this your role is very crucial yeah. to who it eventually emerge we need to get to that point where we're no longer choosing between the devil and the, and the, 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 the sea, yeah. we're yeah. choosing between one saint and another saint mm -hmm. so anybody that wins May the best man win. Yeah. So instead of that point where we are saying, oh, the devil and the deep blue sea, let's start to um, get involved politically in political parties so that we can get the right candidates to make it to the ballot boxes. That Very way, true. we are sure that whoever we pick, they will we'll get the job done. Yeah. Thank you so much, ladies. You're welcome. It's good to be back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even though all the rest that are resting, you are able to, to remove the things out again today. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so before we go, ensure you follow us across all social media handles at Wayshore Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Thank you to everyone that sent in our messages and the ones that missed us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we miss you too. Uh, so please share the link. So don't watch alone. Don't be stingy. Let other people watch. All right. So um, if we missed our quote for today, this is on the presidency. <laughs> I like the last part. It says, in just one moment, or well, rather one month in office, Nigerians appear satisfied with the decisive leadership of President Tenebo and the manner he is redirecting the country to the path of fiscal sustainability and social economic reforms that we urge the EU and other foreign interests to be objective in all the assessments of the internal affairs of our country and allow Nigerians to what? Believe. <laughs> Nigerians like Nigerians are choking no. <laughs> Nigerians are not breathing. <laughs> but hey, thank you so much, guys. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.